Hello, I'm Brian Foster, and today I'm talking about Spiritism. And today I'm going to talk about the state of the world according to a spirit. And this is a recent communication. Before I begin to understand Spiritism and understand how the spirits guide us and set trials and tribulations to us that we agree to before we are born, read my book, Spiritism 101, The Third Revelation. You can get it, of course, in PDF, which you can download for free on my website, nwspiritism.com, or you can have it in Kindle, paperback, or in audible format. In the introduction to the book, On the Way to a World of Regeneration, the spirit Manuel Filomeno de Miranda plainly tells us the current state of our planet. The book was published in 2020, therefore the message was very recent. He reviewed her technological and moral status. It is not a pretty picture. Earthly civilization has reached a high level of expertise regarding cutting-edge technology. The advancements of knowledge, the great challenges of intelligence, the implementation of widespread programs of solidarity, as well as a sense of respect and compliance with the laws that foster external progress and its consequence, amenities. Moving from the dark cave to the luxurious residence, from filth to elaborate forms of hygiene, coupled with the intense quest for the prolongation of a pleasurable and self-indulgent physical existence, society has nonetheless been struggling to defeat illnesses, loneliness, and widespread suffering. This is as good as it gets. The Spirit Manuel does acknowledge our technological progress. Although keep in mind that Lemuria and Atlantis also were technologically advanced, but that did not stop the spirit world under the leadership of Christ to destroy those civilizations because the material progress greatly surpassed their moral progress. Manuel also points out that we do try and follow customs that promote the education and well-being of our population as well as advances in medicine and caring for the less fortunate. This may be the key as to why the spirit realm has hope for our progress. But next comes the bitter truth. The toil to enjoy worldly comforts often leads to tormenting egotistical abuses of power, indifference to existing suffering, and disrespect for the duties imposed by life to all human beings. Daring feats multiply, extreme opulence reaches unimaginable levels. The extravagances of of the affluent recall the revelries in Venice, where after the grand dinners, the partiers tossed the pricey utensils into the muddy waters. The rich had fun seeing the poor throwing themselves madly into the brownish lagoon to recover crockery and cutlery, as well as other objects of silver and gold that adorned the lavish tables. While the flowing of wine Fueling the reveler's madness held the practice of these aberrations. Nowadays, thanks to the treasured resource of virtual communications and air travel that reduces physical distances, the earth has become a global village, giving way to increasingly demanding interactions and greedy behaviors. The desire for supremacy in politics and society and the economy unfortunately has enabled callous and dishonest conducts pushing the growing hopeless masses towards absolute misery. Normally ignored when they are shown or mentioned in the media, it is with disrespect or on account of the absurdities they must endure, the crimes perpetrated on their claims for mercy and justice under the plight of the superlative suffering. This has been the world of follies and the apparent glories of culture and civilization in which the rates of death through hunger, neglect, disease, and now the pandemic frightens anyone with a normal emotional response. The Spirit Manuel lays out our current culture with its emphasis on wealth, power, and fame in a few paragraphs. He speaks the bare truth about our elite class and its effect upon the upward striving mass among the non and semi affluent. Caught up in a mad dash for fame and power, they camouflage their conduct by the use of sophistries such as relative morality and belief in the absolute goodness of the state. Knowing full well that they are the state and can use any example of abhorrent practices by other times and cultures to justify their own. 
as St. Augustine wrote about the rich of the late Roman Empire. They exist only to exalt themselves and crush anyone who opposes their excesses. Our paragons of education and so-called culture are no different. Illustrating their lack of discernment, they assign a value of millions of dollars to a painting that is a white blank canvas. Only walk through any modern art museum in the world, and the lack of creativity and genius is all too apparent. Instead, it is propped up with words and symbols that serve to persuade the gullible and the empty-headed classes that such is art. Whether the stock markets of the world go up or down or sideways, the super-rich become wealthier, and as their capital grows, so does their hold over politicians, media, and educational institutions. And as their control grows over the key levers of society, so does their urge to enact a tyranny of censorship, groupthink, and fear to keep the lower classes at bay. These ultra-powerful do not require a comfortable middle class full of earnest men and women, no. They only need a few pennies per click for millions and millions of impoverished souls. Hence, they conspire to rig society and the economy so that they always come out on top and those underneath lose. Like a gambling establishment, the house always wins, at least in the long run. This is where we are. The human race has the potential to ascend and to bring the entire planet with them. But first, the influence of the powerful cabal must be dismantled. Before we, as a collective, can progress, we must rediscover spirituality, morality, and love, and replace those who deem themselves irreplaceable with men and women of compassion, generosity, and wisdom, who would exercise their given power for the benefit of all, not to provide free lunches, but to provide opportunity to strive for excellence and success spirituality and fraternity, and compassion and love. Learn what type of government the spirit world prefers. Read The Thousand-Year March Toward a Just Society. God bless.